Welcome to the ultimate $2,000 RTX 3080 PC build guide. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. Okay, so with the release of the RTX 3090, 3080, and 3070, I know there's probably a lot of people out there who are looking to either upgrade or build entirely new PCs that are ready for these new graphics cards. So I went ahead and I put together a list of PC parts that I would choose if I was building an entirely new system. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you each individual item, explain exactly why I chose these items, and there will be convenient Amazon affiliate links, which if you choose to use, I will get a small percentage of each purchase made after using the link. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, so starting off with the CPU, here I chose the Ryzen 7 3700X because not only is it a powerful modern eight core 16 thread processor, but it also comes in at a great price of $290, which at that price, you just really can't beat it. And so not only does it have all the modern features that you would expect out of a modern CPU, but it's also PCIe 4 ready. So this is compatible with these new RTX graphics cards, but more importantly, if you choose to use PCIe 4 storage, it's got you covered. Moving on, we're going to need to slot that CPU into something, so for the motherboard, I decided to choose the Asus Tough Gaming X570 Plus Wi-Fi board. The reason why I chose this board is I know personally from owning it that it's a really great quality board, and you know, for a price of $165, you just really can't beat that value. So looking at the specs here, not only is this board ready to be used with a Ryzen third generation processor, but if you flash the BIOS in the future, it should be compatible with fourth generation Ryzen chips as well, which only makes the value that much better. And if we take a look at this motherboard, it has eight SATA ports, two PCIe 4 X16 slots, two PCIe 4 X4 M.2 slots, so you can slot in some really, really fast SSDs. It has six fan headers and a very robust VRM. So for $165, I just don't think you can beat that value. Next up, we have another really important part of the build, and that's the RAM. So I chose 16 gigabytes of Ripjaw 5 DDR4 RAM. It's two 8 gigabyte sticks, so you get dual channel memory. And, you know, I decided to use 16 gigabytes because maybe in the future, if you do all kinds of content creation, maybe you do need 32 gigabytes. But for the vast majority of people, 16 gigabytes should be more than enough. Now, what's more important is the actual specs of this RAM and the price, of course. So this RAM kit comes in at a price of $113, so it's really not too expensive, but what's really great about it is the actual performance of it. So it comes in at 3600 megahertz with the cast latency of 16, 16, 16, 36, and it should be b die. So this is really high performance RAM, and it should be great for overclocking if you're into that. So that's why I would personally recommend this RAM, and I think it's a pretty good deal. Now moving on to the main storage option here for the OS, I'll be using the Gigabyte Aorus NVMe Gen 4 M.2 1 terabyte PCIe Express 4.0 SSD. Now, the reason why I went ahead and chose this is because even though it's pretty expensive at $200, the specs are really, really impressive. So you'll be able to take advantage of those PCIe slots on your motherboard and the compatibility in your CPU. And for that, you get five gigabytes per second read and 4.4 gigabytes per second write with a 1.77 million hours of endurance. So those specs are really impressive because I haven't seen any other Gen 4 SSDs out yet so far that can hit a write speed that's quite that high. There are other options that can do five gigabytes per second read, but the write speeds are only 2.5 gigabytes per second, which some PCIe 3 SSDs are even better than. So this is a great SSD. Now for the game storage drive here, I chose the Samsung 860 Evo one terabyte because you know even though again it's kind of expensive at $140 though sometimes you can get it on sale for closer to $100 it's and it's only a SATA type of SSD well the great thing about it is it has pretty good read and write speeds 550 megabytes per second read 520 megabytes per second write and uh, the endurance is pretty good 1.5 million hours of endurance but the great thing about this SSD is that it's MLC NAND which means that if you move really large files, it's not going to suddenly slow down to a crawl. So this is great for content creators or people who like to move big files around because then you know that this is a very high quality SSD. 
Now moving on to the power supply, and this is something that's very important for this build because these new graphics cards suck a lot of power. So I decided to choose the EVGA 850BQ 80 Plus Bronze Semi-Modular Power Supply. Now there are some better power supplies out there right now, but they're very, very expensive because of all the nonsense that's going on right now. So for $125, it's honestly a pretty good deal right now. Now the specs of this thing, obviously 850 watts, 80 plus bronze, it's semi-modular. It has two CPU 8 pins, three VGA 8 pins. So if your graphics card needs to have three separate 8 pins in it, you're good to go with this power supply. It has three SATA slots, two peripheral slots, and a five-year warranty. And this thing actually comes with a free power supply tester, so that's pretty nice. And now, even though the 3700X does come with its own cooler, it's not amazing. So if you want to get into overclocking or you want something that's really silent, I decided to include an optional cooler. And here I chose the Cooler Master Master Liquid ML240L RGB V2. Quite a mouthful, but you know what? For 80 bucks, it's a pretty great deal. So this is a 240 millimeter water cooler and it's AM4 compatible. So this should give you some pretty great cooling performance and at the very least, it should be quite a bit more quiet than the stock cooler. So again, optional, but if you want that, you can go ahead and grab it. And then finally for the case. Now, I'll tell you right up front, there probably are some better value cases or some cases that can maybe give you better airflow because they're not using tempered glass in the front. They have a fan in the front. However, I have this case personally, and I can tell you, I really, really like it. If you optimize the airflow inside this case, it's actually really great. And you know what? For $153, it's not that bad. And so this is the Thermaltake Core X71 Tempered Glass Edition SPCC ATX Full Tower. And this is a huge, huge case. And that's the reason why I love it because you can put so many different things in there. There's plenty of places for you to put uh, power supply in different spots or water cooling. You could do your own custom water cooling in this thing. It's just absolutely huge. And that's the main reason why I love this thing is just a ton of you. I mean, you can take the hard drive cages and you can pull them out. You can get rid of where you have the typical DVD drive slot. So there's just a ton of customization in here as well. You can have up to 10 fans. You can mount a water cooler on the side, on the top or on the bottom, like I mentioned earlier. And you know what? Again, it's a little bit expensive for a case, but Honestly, I really love this case, so I can definitely recommend it, and it should definitely fit absolutely everything in this build. So going through all these parts and adding it all up, it looks like it comes to a total of $1,266. So if you throw in a $700 RTX 3080, well, you know what? If the RTX 3080 that you buy is custom and it's maybe just a little bit over $700, that gets you to exactly $2,000. Now, keep in mind, we did not include windows or any peripherals, so that's going to increase the price. And on top of that, we're not accounting for taxes and shipping because, you know what, depending on where you live, it could be much, much different. So I really can't accurately calculate that for you. So the overall price is going to be over $2,000, but it highly depends on what you want. It depends on what operating system you're going to use and it depends on where you live so just for the parts themselves without taxes or shipping you're looking at pretty much exactly two thousand dollars maybe even a little bit under so I've seen a lot of people online claiming that you need to build like a $5,000 gaming PC, but the PC I just put together is the exact PC that I would build if I was building from scratch right now. And the performance of this thing should absolutely blow you away. And it has tons of room. If you want to upgrade the graphics card, if you want to upgrade the CPU, if you want to upgrade the RAM, if you want to upgrade to water cooling in the future, this whole system is just so customizable. And that's why I love it. It's not only high performance and it's great value, but it's also very custom. Customizable. But hey, that's just what I think. Let me know in the comments below, is there anything that you would change or would you just take it as is? I'd love to see what you have to say in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.